Ladies and gentlemen, this is Hollywood Joe from Hollywood's World of Sports coming to you tonight with a special podcast. And tonight, I want to talk about a phenomenon in pop culture. Usually, I don't talk about a lot of entertainment and music and movies and TV and stuff like that. But there is one show, one show that I am completely obsessed with, completely love, uh, can completely watch over and over again. And I'm sure most of you have heard it by now. It's called Cobra Kai. Now, when I was a little kid, I grew up watching the Karate Kid movies. Uh, you know, with Pat Morita, um, Ralph Macchio, Martin Cove, uh, William Zapka, um, all, all the great characters. And I gotta tell you, um, Cobra Kai has not only started to create a legacy of its own, it has added on to the legacy of the Karate Kid movies. Now, the original Karate Kid got rave reviews. It was an amazing movie. It was everything you could hope for in an underdog story. I even think it was better of an underdog story than Rudy or Rocky. And that, that's hard for me to say because I love both the Rudy movie and the Rocky movie, but the Karate Kid that just had more relatable stuff to it. Yes, Rudy was based on a true story and, you know, stuff like that. And Rocky was a phenomenal piece of cinema history. And, you know, honestly, Rocky is also another you know, pop culture phenomenon. But for some reason, for some reason, I related to The Karate Kid more than I did all these other underdog movies. And the original Karate Kid was great. Um, I think Mr. Miyagi is one of the greatest uh, characters in cinematic history. Uh, I think what he represents is pure and wholesome and you can learn a lot from his character. Uh, I've always felt that way. And so this may shock you, but um, Karate Kid 2 was actually my favorite of the three movies, the three, the first three original movies. Um, for some reason, Karate Kid 2, just I, I loved learning more about Miyagi. Miyagi is probably my favorite character, and, and obviously the... Uh, Karate Kid, Karate Kid movie series. Um, you know, I just he had so many like awesome one-liners and so many um great moves and just was such. I you know, like I said, I think he's one of the greatest characters in cinematic history. And so, Karate Kid Two is the one that always stuck out for me. Now, Karate Kid 3. A lot of people don't like Karate Kid 3. Uh, it just didn't have the flow that the first or second one did. Uh, but it just fell off. And, you know, if I were to compare Karate Kid 3, it would probably be a lot like, you know, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift or Rocky Five. That's what I would compare Karate Kid 3 to. Um, the, the characters in Karate Kid 3 were amazing. I thought Terry Silver is one of the greatest, you know, villains and, you know, manipulators of all time. But for some reason, just like the story, I don't know, the story was off for some reason. And I don't know if that was because of, uh, you know, just the, how, how the times were, but, um, the, the characters are great. I thought. Mike Barnes was an amazing character. Obviously, Terry Silver. Uh, John Kreese, probably up there in the top 10 villains of all time in terms of movies. Uh, you know, but where the, where the flaws happened in Karate Kid 3 were made up in season four of Cobra Kai. And 
I just got done watching season four of Cobra Cry over this weekend. And I got to tell you, it was amazing. The plot twist and the turns and the surprises and just how people can change. Like that's one of the, that's one of the central themes of the Cobra Kai series is how people can change. Johnny has definitely changed. Johnny has uh, changed dramatically since, you know, the first Karate Kid. Uh, Daniel has also changed. Um, Daniel's still very hot, hot-headed um, and stuck in his ways, but he's also, you know, I, I think... Uh, <laughs> He's learning to be more tolerant of understanding of different ways of doing things. And you see that towards uh, towards the end of season four. Um, one of the things that I loved is how Terry Silver was reintroduced to the Cobra Kai series. Um, like I said, Terry Silver is probably one of the best villains ever. Uh, I think the the things that went wrong in Karate Kid 3 were made right in Cobra Kai Season 4. I mean, Terry Silver just, he blew, like, Thomas Ian, Thomas Ian Griffith should be proud of his performance in Season 4 because he just, he did a masterful job of, you know, just, like, transforming his character throughout the season. And I look forward to seeing what happens in season five and future seasons. Uh, I'll have a podcast at a later date about my theories on season five, but um, other people that have changed, like I've noticed crease towards the end of season four starts to show a little um, soft spot if you mean, if that's uh, how I want to word it. He uh, he shows a soft spot, I think, for Johnny Lawrence, and I really do think he looks as Johnny as a son um, that he never had. And he, you even heard Johnny reference it when talking to Miguel that, you know, growing up, Kreese was like a father figure to him, even though he's not the person... You know, he's not, you know, he didn't want to be who Kreese was about. But so you can definitely tell that there's a bit of a father-son relationship still there with Kreese and Johnny, even though they won't admit it. Um, and I think, um, you know, Kreese starting to show a little more compassion towards Johnny. Um starts to rub off on Johnny and uh, I'm really curious though to see what happens to Chris after what happened at the end of season four. Uh, if you, uh, <laughs> if you watch season four, I, I cannot believe Chris got arrested at the end. Uh, that was shocking. Uh, I'm really curious to see how he gets himself out of jail uh, after uh, Terry Silver set him up. Um, my, one of my favorite characters in the Cobra Kai universe, Karate Kid universe, was Chosen. I loved Chosen in Karate Kid too. He just was such a uh, such a jerk, an entitled jerk, mind you. And I love in season three how he redeemed himself, and him and Daniel um, put you know put the rivalry to rest and. Chosen showed him some techniques that Miyagi never did. Um, it was just really, really cool to see. And at the end of season four, when Daniel is contemplating what to do next, um, Chosen shows up um, at Miyagi's gravesite. And apparently he agrees to help Daniel take down Cobra Kai. And that presents an interesting dynamic in itself uh, in the future because Chosen had nothing to do with Cobra Kai, probably never knew Cobra Kai existed. But <clears throat> if there's anyone evil in 
nasty and mean enough to take on Terry Silver, it's definitely Chosen. Chosen has it in his body and in his mind and his heart to be a mean, nasty son of a you-know-what. So, um, again, I'm, those are just things I'm thinking for the future. Um, but, again, um, you know, the first four seasons of Cobra Kai have done an excellent job of adding to the legacy of the original three Karate Kid movies. Now, I've been hearing rumors that they might eventually incorporate Julie Pierce, um, you know, Hillary Swank. That was Hillary Swank's movie with the next Karate Kid. Um, I'd be curious to see how that plays into because, um, you know, again, Hillary Swank, you know, as Julie Pierce, she never had any run-ins with Cobra Kai. So I'd be really curious to see how that would play out. But again, the writers, the storytellers, the producers, they've done a great job of incorporating characters to the show. They did a great job incorporating Chosen. They did a great job incorporating Terry Silver. Uh, they've done a great job incorporating, you know, old members of Cobra Kai, like um, Bobby Brown, and before he passed away, Rob Garrison is Tommy. And uh, just, they've done a great job incorporating those guys into different situations. So, again, um, it's almost like you're seeing a resurgence of the Karate Kid through Cobra Kai. Um, there are some people who probably watch Cobra Kai but never watch Karate Kid, um, and they should. They should absolutely watch the Karate Kid uh, because it really explains a lot of what's going on. Like, there's a lot of references to the original three movies in the Cobra Kai series. Um, and I got to tell you, it's really cool, and I got to, you know, the music composers for... Cobra Kai deserve a big shout out because they incorporate a lot of the old music in the new series and they make it work and they make it fit right. And like every time I hear a bit of old piece of music from one of the three soundtracks, it's like, oh my God, I can pinpoint exactly when that music was or what Mr. Miyagi was saying or what fight was going on. And so that is really cool from a fan perspective to like be able to allow yourself to be taken back to the original movies as you're watching the series. And so again, um, just the karate kid in general has always been a big influence on my life. Uh, I've learned a lot of valuable lessons through watching the movies. And um, there are a lot of great life lessons that, you know, any generation of people, whether it be young or old, middle-aged, um, whatever it may be, like, you can learn a lot from watching those movies. And so I think that's, like, one of the greatest legacies that the Karate Kid can have is that you just, there's a lot of teachable lessons in those movies. So, uh, you know, that's kind of my thoughts on it. I've been wanting to talk about the Karate Kid and Cobra Kai for a while now. Um, you know, I write a review and recap of the seasons um, on my blog, but I've never really sat down and talked about my love and my obsession and my, uh, my passion for the Karate Kid movies and the Cobra Kai series. Um, it's, uh, it's one of those things that, like, um, I can watch all day long. I can read about it, watch interviews of people that are involved, listen to the soundtracks of the movies and the series. I can, I can very much get lost and lose myself in Karate Kid and Cobra Kai. And so it's kind of cool to just, uh, sit here and talk about it and let people listen to how much 
love and passion I have for the movies and the series because, again, there, there's a lot of uh, teachable moments, a lot of things you can learn, uh, there's a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, some serious moments, some awesome fights along the way. Um, overall, it's just a great, great movie franchise and a great TV series. And if you haven't watched it yet, I would highly encourage you to first watch the original three Karate Kid movies and jump right into the series. You will have so much fun. You will have a blast. You will laugh. You'll cry. You'll have like, oh crap moments. Um, just some phenomenal storytelling, phenomenal character development. And honestly, it's a phenomenal legacy. And I, 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 as a fan, respect and admire and love the legacy of the Karate Kid so much. Um, again, I, I always get excited when a new season of Cobra Kai gets announced because I'm always, I'm always curious to see how they're going to honor the past while still building towards the future. So, uh, anyways, I ran it on long enough, rambled on long enough. Uh, and my name is Hollywood Joe from Hollywood's World of Sports. And instead of using controversy doesn't come without criticism, I'm going to end it with one of my favorite lines in the Karate Kid series. Never put passion in front of principle. Even if you win, you lose. Have a good night.